Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you step-by-step -step three easy henna designs that are perfect for all henna beginners. The first design we're gonna do today is a simple strip from one finger to the wrist, which I think is a great size to do if you're a beginner henna artist. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my henna cone, nice and full, and I'm going to use the middle finger as a guide for the middle. So I'm just gonna put a dot right there as a guideline, and I'm gonna put one right here and one on the other side, and then we're gonna do some draped lines. So welcome to voiceover Gopi Henna. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy this fully real-time video so there's absolutely no speeding up in this video and I want to show you as you can see what I'm doing here is I've actually draped two lines and I'm filling it in and what this does is create a really nice and clean thick line because you can do it without this method but you know you usually have to work with the henna cone really flush to the skin and if you do that you know even your breathing can kind of make the line waver a little bit so i just want you to see that you can create really luscious thick lines and look how clean it looks honestly i love a nice kind of diamond shaped border on the wrist i think it's really really beautiful and here you can see we are doing what I like to call scallops. Honestly, I don't know if any particular henna motif has a specific name, but I actually got that from my cake decorating days. Um, I remember doing a technique that was kind of similar to this for borders of cakes and they called it scallops. So that is kind of my reference for these. Um, if you guys have a name for them, definitely let me know down below. I love hearing all of your guys' um, names for different symbols. There's been some funny ones I've heard of. Um, but yeah, so this part can seem a little redundant, but you know, it can be actually really hard in the beginning to get all of your scallops to be the same height. So if you want to see a trick on that, or at least kind of like a tip if you're just starting, let me know down below. I definitely want to create tons of more videos for my henna beginners. Though one thing I did realize um, editing this with my husband is these kind of are a little bit difficult, you could say. Like, I think they're good for beginners, but maybe they might seem a little challenging if you are super, super new. Like, maybe you've never even used a henna cone before. But if you have, then I feel like this, these designs are fairly simple. As you can see, I'm basically just using lines, um, you know, the scallops, and as you can see these are kind of like larger versions so they're really really simple elements um, but the trick is getting it to be somewhat clean and that is just something that's going to come with practice so now we are moving on to the wrist area i like to kind of start closer to where the end of the design is so since this one isn't going much past the wrist as you can see i kind of started right at the wrist so for example i wouldn't start right at the fingers because i like to move in a direction that goes from the end point to where I'm going to be actually finishing. So I'm gonna be finishing at the fingers. Therefore, I like to start closer to the wrist, but sometimes I will kind of oscillate back and forth just to kind of build on the design and kind of get an idea of the flow of the composition. So I kind of, you know, worked a little bit on the wrist area and then I worked a little bit towards the hand, but I'm not gonna go fully down before actually finishing up where I want the wrist to go. I hope that made sense. 
this video is definitely aimed more so for you know super henna beginners therefore i just really kind of want to emphasize my workflow and if you are someone that's watching that is you know used to doing henna quite often you maybe even have had your own clients you might have experienced this before it's something that can be a little bit irritating but basically when your client asks for a certain henna design at a certain length and then you finish that design and then they end up asking for like way more so for example say I'm, I'm doing a design like this that just ends right at the wrist but then they'll say oh actually I, I want a full arm can you just go you know all the way up to the elbow then you have to figure out how to work around the work that you've already done that isn't dry yet and so you have to be super careful and it just makes it so much harder so now we are working on the finger design again trying to keep it super simple fairly easy for my henna beginners out there so as you can see we're kind of creating a little border which is kind of like a ring just adding some dots and then i'm going to kind of create some cascading dots to kind of meet up into it this is something i really like i think it looks super cool and kind of creates a nice kind of thin ending from the wrist area to the finger so this is kind of jewelry-esque in a way because it does kind of give me the vibe of having a ring with a bracelet that kind of attaches you know those really pretty ones that kind of connect i love those and yeah something like this is really great to do on yourself if you're new it's also really great if you're doing like a henna party where there's a lot of people it should be fairly quick and easy to do but yeah that is pretty much it for this one if you try it out for yourself, definitely let me know with a comment or a DM. And yeah, here we go to the next one. This next design is going to be a little bit more asymmetrical, so kind of off to the side, but it's gonna feature my personal favorite henna motif, which is vines. So now moving on to design number two, and I have a little confession to make. <laughs> I originally wanted to do this design going on the side of the ring finger instead of the pointer finger, but when the camera started rolling, I totally put the dot in the wrong spot, and it's kind of a lesson in when you're doing henna organically on someone, especially if you're going to do a freestyle, you may do something that you didn't intend, and sometimes you just have to flow with it. And that is what I did here. I'm still trying to keep it fairly simple, utilizing you know, the same kind of styles that we practiced before in previous videos, and I kind of wanted to make this one a little Little bit more asymmetrical because I feel the one that we just did is pretty straight up and down as far as the design goes so this one will have some more curves but yeah we're just beginning with kind of a simple medallion you could say and I'm gonna go in with some more scallops but these ones I'm actually making a little bit taller and this is something that I like to do a lot is I will do a lot of thick scallops and then I'll go in with some thinner ones and this and this I feel just kind of helps balance out the composition because if it was all the same line weight I feel like the design kind of merges together a little bit more and this just kind of gives the eye a little bit more sense of balance to it um, so that's why you know I started with a thick element and then I did some thin ones did some more thick elements and again going in, in with some thin. So this is something you've probably heard me say quite a few times if you've been watching my videos, but if you are new, something I always highly encourage to keep in mind when you go to begin your own designs is to kind of have an, a mind for creating different line weights throughout your design. So don't just do all thin, but try to get some thick elements in there as well. Or don't just do all thick, you want to have a little bit of thin elements in there too, just to give some cohesive balance to the design. And yeah, so let me know how you guys are liking this video so far. I really, really want to make more videos, design tutorials, but I feel like if there's just music, it might be a little monotonous possibly. And I do like doing voiceover, so I would like to talk maybe about topics that you want to hear about as I'm doing designs. 
So let me know down below how you're feeling about this video style and I always want to take your feedback into consideration. But having different design tutorials has definitely been something that's been requested quite a lot so I just really want to create videos that are helpful for you but I kind of want to start from the ground up which is why I'm kind of starting with the basics like the last video was how to hold a henna cone. This one is like three easy designs which hopefully is building on what we went over in that video and so on and so forth. So if you are an advanced or more like intermediate henna artist then definitely bear with me. I will be coming out with videos for you as well but it might just be a little while to try to catch everyone up to speed. If you are a little bit like me, you are probably more of a visual learner. So for me to try to describe with words exactly what goes into my thought process when I'm creating a freestyle design can be a little bit challenging. But as you can kind of get an idea just from seeing me work here, which is why I wanted to do it in real time, you can really see that I kind of focused on the main medallion and I kind of worked it to be a little bit tapered on either side. Just again, like I said, to create some balance. And I'm going in on the finger, as you can see, creating a nice little border, which I feel is always kind of a great connector. To connect you know the finger area to kind of the hand or wrist design so i'm actually going in with the vines and since this is for beginners i wanted to do it a little bit more curved so there's not as much pressure to do a super straight line and as you will see when we switch positions it's kind of curved so hopefully my idea with this was to hopefully make it a little bit easier for henna beginners you know you don't have to worry about it being 100% straight and then you can just kind of play around with the leaves. This part as always is something I try to tell beginners not to really worry themselves over. It can be really challenging getting the leaves exactly how you want them in the beginning but as you can kind of see you know they kind of all go off in different directions which again kind of works with this type of vine. You know, it really, really lends itself to being a little bit more adaptable. So again, it doesn't have to be super perfect, super symmetrical. So yeah, hopefully there's less pressure with this type of vine. And I just think it looks so fun and so beautiful and a perfect way to connect the design that we did on the wrist to the finger. This last and final design is going to be a mandala. It's going to be my personal favorite and I'm going to show you exactly how I like to set up so that I get perfectly symmetrical petals all the way around. So I will be beginning this mandala with a nice big swirl. We worked on this in the first video when we went over how to hold a henna cone and here you can see you can't really tell that it is a perfect circle because the filming is a little bit off to the side but when we move positions you will see it is a nice perfect circle which again can be a little bit hard which is why i recommend to kind of start from outwards and going inwards that will allow you to kind of gauge the size of swirl that you're going to start with and again going with scallops as per usual. This is something that you are just not going to be able to get away from. This is something that is really like a foundational element for most henna style designs. 
it is something that kind of gives a little bit of accent to you know borders mandalas and it's just really kind of a good foundational building block for designs that you want to do for petals etc lately i've been really really liking the double scallop border around swirls i don't know why it's just something that i've been really really gravitating towards especially for mandalas or flowers that are nice and big one thing though i kind of want to address that is a little bit unrelated is the speed at which you work this is a question i get asked all the time in my dms especially when i post bridal henna videos or bridal mindy yes both are correct henna or mindy that's something i kind of want to cover in a whole separate video but people always ask me how long did it take and when i tell them it kind of seems really fast to a lot of people and that is something that I feel like you just can't really compare yourself to, especially when you're first starting. I don't think speed should be your number one goal, though it should definitely maybe come later, you know, not to be you know super, super fast, but to be able to work at a pace that allows you to do a good amount of people in, you know, a fairly small amount of time. You should be able to pace yourself well so that you don't get super super exhausted at the end of a session because it just took way longer than you or your client thought. Basically what I'm trying to get at here is that speed shouldn't be your number one objective when you're first starting out. It's definitely something that will come later so try not to stress out too much on how fast or slow you work. Really just focus on getting the muscle memory down. That is really what will help with speed later on. The more you can practice especially the same motifs over and over again, the faster you'll be and the easier things will just flow. trick for getting super symmetrical petals all the way around your circular mandala designs and basically you're just using guidelines with really really thin pressure so I'll go ahead and show you nice and close up so you can get a feel for it so first I like to start from the bottom and then you make it the size that you want your petal or the height that you want it to be and then you go across and then from the center, you go off to the side and then off to the side again and then from the middle, it's pretty easy to eyeball and then directly across and same on the other side. So now once you have your guidelines all set, you can work your petals. I'm doing the version that is kind of like a parenthesis with an overemphasized center there. I really, really prefer this type of petal. This is the one I gravitate to most often. It can be a little challenging to get that nice little curve in the center exactly, but I feel like once you have your guidelines set up, it's pretty easy at this point. You just kind of connect them together. I do like to start from the bottom and go all the way up versus just doing the top of it, if that makes sense. If you've watched my previous video where I show you how I like to hold my henna cone, you can see here I've done that little trick where I push down the henna paste about halfway down and then I fold the other half over and then I kind of grasp it in between my thumb and my pointer finger and then I'm using my thumb and kind of like the heel of my palm to squeeze the pressure out. So now we are moving to the inside of the petal and you can kind of see I'm using really light pressure there to create a shaded look and this is something that does take time to master. I do suggest trying this out on paper if you are super new but I, I will try to describe what I'm doing here so you can kind of see what I'm doing but I'm gonna try to explain it again this is really hard for me. 
but I'm using hardly any pressure from my thumb. And you can kind of see I'm using the three fingers there to kind of guide the line, but I'm also using my wrist a little bit there to kind of like give it a little flick at the end just to kind of create a really nice and even taper. And I'm using my pinky a little bit just to kind of stabilize because this does have a lot of motion to it. And if you want it to be fairly straight, you do kind of want to anchor yourself a little bit instead of working just in the air. And one thing I am realizing now looking back on this video is I don't always use my pinky to stabilize. I use the side of my hand a lot as well, but I keep the pinky out either to stabilize or to just kind of move it out of the way just so I don't kind of mess up any of the actual henna paste I've already kind of laid down on the hand. To keep this design fairly easy and simple, I will be repeating the same element all the way around in between each petal. This kind of makes it a little bit easier if you're just starting out because you don't really have to focus on too many varying elements. I really hope this video hasn't been too redundant. I just really wanted to have a real-time video for you all just so you can see my actual working speed and I am hoping that you guys are practicing along with me. This is something that I was hoping that you can just kind of turn on and have maybe a little piece of paper or your own hand in front of you and just kind of practice along and if you want to pause and try to recreate this that is also a really good idea just to get you going and just to kind of get you practicing. So to kind of close out this video, I just want to thank you for watching all the way to the end. I know this was a super long one, so if you have stayed until the end, please let me know down below what you thought of this video. Don't forget to subscribe and please, please, if you have any ideas or any questions or anything that you want me to cover in a future video, definitely let me know down below. I have a whole list going of different ideas that I want to create videos for and I would love to hear your input. I do kind of want to do a FAQ video possibly. So maybe doing a super elaborate henna design kind of time lapse but then going over your questions so it's not just a talking head video unless you guys want to see something like that because that is something I have thought about as well. You know, covering topics anywhere from henna business to henna history, all these things that maybe won't involve an actual henna design creation on video. So yeah, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video and definitely subscribe. We got more videos coming and I will see you in the next one.